ChatGPT has a plethora of use cases, but in my opinion, the best case is its ability to produce custom code based on your normal text input. This is huge for people like me who have no coding background or coding experience, but know what problem I want to solve. ChatGPT has become my personal software developer, and today I'm going to go through an example from start to finish, where we will be looking at large text files and figure out how we can automatically extract key data points within these complicated text files, saving us hours of time from doing boring repetitive manual work. Let's jump right in. Before we begin, if you want to do this at home, you will need to have Python and Visual Studio Code installed on your computer. If you do not have these, keep watching the video, otherwise skip to this timestamp below to continue watching. This installation guide is for Mac users, however those with the PC, it's exact same set of instructions, however you're choosing the Windows options when downloading the software, so just be sure of that. So in the Python website here, we're going to click download and open up our downloaded file, and you're going to go through the installation here. So just press continue, agree, and we're just going to click in the password here, install software, click OK, and we're just going to wait for the installation to be completed. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to get a, a notification here. Here, click close and we can just say move to trash in this case we don't actually need this in the installer anymore now to check if this was successful we're going to go to our terminal app on our mac here and we're just going to type in python 3 we should get a message saying python and the version number to let us know it was successfully installed running this and there we go our python and updated version we just downloaded so python has now been successfully downloaded to our mac okay so in the visual studio code website we're going to click download mac universal all right wait for this this is the page you get when it's downloading we're just going to wait for it to be completed. Okay, now we're going to open. It will finish expanding. And now our Visual Studio Code app is available in our downloads. We are just going to open this. Click open. And here is the introductory note. This just gives us a list of updates of what's been improved. Here is the start page. So we're going to go to a new file and just click text file as our default to start. One thing to know about Visual Studio Code, it, was, it will auto detect the language you're being used to apply here, as you'll see in a second. So first thing we need to do is we're actually going to go to our extensions here, and we're going to install the Python for Visual Studio Code. We need to install Python twice. So make sure you go to Python, make sure it's the one by Microsoft. There's other, there's a couple other ones here, but has to be the one by Microsoft. So make sure to install this. Once that's done, we're ready to start using our Visual Studio Code. The only other thing I wanna point out is make sure you're using the same type of Python I'm using. So at the bottom here, you can click on which version of Python you want. There's recommended and global. I am personally using the global because I found that to be a lot easier straightforward for me. So whenever I'm doing these automations, it's gonna be using global. So make sure to click global. So in this scenario, I am a financial analyst and my goal is to go through all of these sheets and pick out specific data points that I need to analyze. Specifically, I want the security number and the closing quantity of shares for each security on this text file. But I also have this other large text file where I not only want the security number, I want the sum of all negative values within each security. And I want this to be outputted in a CSV for further analysis on a spreadsheet. So as you can see, a very complicated ask because these data points are hidden within our text file. There is no clear pattern, and we need to use an advanced programming language to get to our ideal state. We begin our ChatGPT conversation giving it as much context as possible in what I like to call the PI method, which stands for prompt interval training. Essentially, this is where we feed ChatGPT with a very large input, specifying all requirements and context. But at the end, we ask the outputs from ChatGPT to be at intervals, as our problem is a multi-step one that requires a large code output to assist. We need to test this code at various stages in the step-by-step. -step. So the first step is reading a text file from the directory. So here's the Python code snippet to read each text file in the directory. This code lists all the text files in the directory. So what this does is it ensures that our Python can read our text files. So we're just gonna copy this. In our Visual Studio code, we're going to just paste it. And we just hit run here at the bottom. We're gonna save and successfully, this has been saved. Note the blue dot here indicates it is successfully saved. Going back to ChatGPT. So we can say to ChatGPT, this work, please proceed to the next interval. So the next step is going to read from our text file and extract relevant data. So copying this code, we're going to go to our Visual Studio code and we can just delete this. This is not important. We can hit that and we're just going to run it again. 
And we need to make sure this works this time. Now we have an error saying no module named pandas. So we're going to copy this error and go back into ChatGPT and give it the error. So it's telling us to install pandas. So we can just copy this and then put it to our terminal. So copy this code. We're going to go back into here and sing to run in our terminal, which is just this window at the bottom. Click that. So just hit enter. Click enter. And okay. This has been successfully installed. So we've successfully installed the pandas library. So we're not going to attempt our Python script again. So we're going to hit run. And again, it's saying, uh, we're getting an error message saying text file is not defined. So just copy this, go back to our chat GPT and just paste the error. So it corrects it now by giving the text directory, which was missing in the previous. So note the text directory is here, but it's missing an output. So we actually going to correct chat GPT on our own here because we know for a fact that our output, which is just the folder we want our CSV pile to appear, is not present in the code. So we're just going to say, please modify the code to include the output for our CSVs. So on our updated code here, you see that there are two directories, the text directory and the CSV directory. We're also gonna get a completion message. So we will know if our text files are processed correct into our CSVs. So copying the code here, going back to Visual Studio Code, we can delete this again, hit paste, run, and all text files processed and corresponding CSV files created. Now, how we're going to check this is going to go into our desktop here. Desktop folder for our file directories is this one. Opening this up, these are the four folders, which are two of our inputs and two of our outputs. Remember I said there were two text files we wanted to analyze. This was the first one, was the ledger. The ledger contained the ledger balance, which was the complicated text file. And going back, so you see the CSV ledger folder should now have a new file under it of our updated CSV. And opening this, you see exactly what we wanted, a security number and the ledger balance, which was just a closing quantity. So our first text file is complete. Let's now go back into our second text file, which is the unsettled. In this case, I have a much more complicated ask. I want for each security number to correspond and take the cumulative total of all of its negative values. Now, it will have negative values and it will have positive values in this column. They will not be the same or consistent. Furthermore, a security number may appear more than once in the file here of over 900 pages. So this is a very complicated ask for ChatGPT. And I want the ideal state to have two columns again of the security number and the trade sum of only the negative values, completely ignoring any positive value in this column here. So if it's a positive value, do not add it to the negative value, just ignore it completely. I only want the sum of negative values here. Going back into ChatGPT, we're gonna continue off the current conversation just so it has context on our issue. I'm going to insert the following prompt, which is the exact same as our first prompt. The only difference is my ideal state. So in this case, I want my ideal state to be converted from a text file into a CSV. And the output CSV should have two columns, one for the security number and one for the total sum of its associated negative trade value. So I'm putting this, so our first step is extracting and aggregating trade values for each security number, and it lists what it's going to do. It won't handle multiple files or write CSV into this step. And that's because again, going back to our pi method, if this is incorrect, we know it's incorrect. If we were to have multiple files or write the CSV into this step, we may not know where the issue is if the code is not right. So copying our code up here, we know that our text file was listed above. So we can actually challenge ChatGPT and say our text file is actually this. Okay, so we now have an output put for our Python. We just don't know really where it's going to save. It's not clear from the code or in the instructions. So I'm going to ask where is the output to be displayed indicate in the done. Now it's just going to edit our uh, Python code. So there's a completion message just so it's easier for us. Okay, we're going to copy this code. Go back. We're going to have a new file here. So we're going to go file new text file and just paste in the output from ChatGPT and we're going to run again and we can just save this to text and we're going to just run and there's a direct, there's an error it looks like. Just make sure, yes, there's an error. So error, so just copy this error. So saying it's a directory, go back into ChatGPT, paste this. So our issue is that Python was interpreting uh, this file path to be a file, and it's actually a folder containing that can contain multiple files. Going back into our folder here, this is our main folder, and this is the folder we're after. Notice the complexity of this file. I don't wanna have to update the name every single time in our 
conversation with ChatGPT. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying, okay, whatever file's in here, make sure you're analyzing. So I'm gonna remind myself to delete this file after we're done with it. So going back into ChatGPT, it's now processed an updated code and we're just gonna copy this, go back to text two and delete this and hit run. And now it says script execution complete. That your trade values are displayed above. Perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. So going back to ChatGPT, we can say the output was successful. We can move on to the next interval. The output was successful. We can move on to the next interval. So now it's going to aggregate these values into a CSV file for us. And you see that it now yeah, it autofills the text directory and the CSV directory provided in the initial instructions for this. So really cool. It remembers our previous instructions, complicated as they are, and we don't have to reiterate it constantly. This is just, again, an advantage of using this method of the interval. Okay. Essentially, what we can do is just copy the exact same thing. We're going to copy our code and go back into our Visual Studio code. And we're going to actually just delete all this because again this is not our final deal state this was just our first interval so our updated interval is right here and when i say interval again i'm just saying the updated code that gets us closer to our ideal state we can now run our updated text to script execution complete that was really fast so aggregate trade values have been written to our csv output Okay, awesome. So the only way to check this is if we go back to our desktop and opening up our CSV ledger, we see now there was an output at CSV. So aggregate trade values CSV that was run just now, opening this and voila, we have our security number and the sum of total trade values for all the corresponding security numbers, which is thousands and thousands of numbers we just processed in under two minutes. Really, really cool to have. Now that we have completed the first part of our ask, that is, we have successfully extracted the key data points in our text files and formatted them as an output in a CSV. The next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna copy these tables and input them into a spreadsheet and ask for an analysis. In my example, I'm gonna use Google Sheets, but in your case, you can use any sort of spreadsheet software you'd like. Once I have formatted this CSV into our spreadsheet, let's go ahead and insert our initial prompt for the ask. So back into our conversation with ChatGPT, we're now onto the final step of our analysis. We have our CSV files, but now I want to further analyze them for my specific requirements of the day of comparing them. Specifically, I want to match each security number from each text file and compare each value that they attained from each text file. So I'm gonna ask from ChatGPT is that I'm gonna have both my CSVs to be inserted on two different tabs in Google Sheet, and I want to have a script auto match the security numbers and their trade sum and total trade values and a difference between the two columns. So this task requires a step-by-step -step output, meaning that you will output the code that fills part of my ask and so on. So a continuation of our current pie method. Just for context, this is our blank spreadsheet and there's three columns here, unsettled, ledger, and comparison. So unsettled is just, we're just gonna copy what our CSV file was. So going back to our CSV file, we can just open this, copy the entire file, go back into our window here, and same thing for ledger. Going into our ledger output, which is this CSV, we're going to copy all the values and simply paste them at the top here. So you will see why we don't do a formula for this. There's a bit more nuance to it, and we just wanna make it easier for anyone who uses this. So we have unsettled, we have ledger. So inputting our request. So ChatGPT is going to provide a Google script for us uh, in JavaScript. So the first part of our problem was dealt using Python. This is more JavaScript because Google Sheets uses JavaScript in its app script here. So opening our app script is just our code. So using our Py method, it's saying the script will only log the data from both sheets to verify access. Please run the script and confirm can access the data. So that's our first step. Copying this, going back into our project here. We're going to paste in the script it gave us, hit save, and we're just going to rename this to what our spreadsheet's called, and we're going to hit run. It's going to ask us for permissions. We're going to review permissions, and once we click allow, it will execute and run our script, and it was logged. So this indicates to us that the script was successful. So going back into our conversation with ChatGPT, we can say the script was successful. Please proceed to the next interval. So now it's going to match security numbers and calculate differences. So matching the security numbers between ledger and unsettled values, calculating the difference between the trade values. Okay, so ChatGPT provided us an updated code. I just want to make one thing clear to ChatGPT on where the output's going. So I'm going to say, please ensure the output is in the comparison tab. And so it's just going to modify this script to ensure output is in our comparison tab here at the bottom. And one more note I'm going to add before testing it is please make 
sure the script runs fast. We don't want to be waiting for it to be processed. So I want to essentially optimize the Google script, giving me an optimized Google script for fast execution. Because our files are so large, we need this to be fully optimized. Okay, so once that's done, we're ready to test it. And going back into and copy code, going back into our app script, we can again just delete this because this is our updated code save and hit run execution started execution completed within two seconds so let's go to our sheet here and we see we see our security number we see our ledger trade sum the unsettled trade value and the difference so all of this was just processed in two seconds and let's make this even more efficient for us so instead of me having to go into here the app script every single time to run this and risk possibly editing the code here let's actually add a button so it's easier for us to run this whenever we want to so let's insert image over cells and just hit play and it doesn't matter which one we select but let's just pick a convenient one let's just pick one that's appealing insert let's drag this to the top and we can assign a script to this button so assign script uh, what script do you want to assign well whatever the name of the function is so be function match security numbers I'm going to copy this and going back into our google sheet we're going to call this script we're going to assign it to match security numbers okay so now if i delete these instead of having to go into the script and click run I can just run the script here and it will process exactly what we need. Really, really cool to have. So from a really complicated text file, we convert these into CSVs and then further analyze them on a spreadsheet where we compare the difference of the values. And again, just to reiterate, Google Sheets extension is totally free. There is no fee you have to pay for. It's included in all the spreadsheets. Excel has a similar thing too in the VBI automation. That could be another example I do in a, in a later video. But for now, I hope you guys found this useful in our first example of automating. Let's recap of everything we've done. We have just taken hundreds of text files, run them through our Python code, and we're able to get a clean cut CSV output. Then taking that CSV, we input into a spreadsheet and running our JavaScript code, we were able Able to automate even further and both codes were provided by chat gpt so some very large number of hours of manual processing has been shrunk down to under three minutes and this is just one example of what i'm sure are many automations out there waiting to be implemented and this was the first of a series i plan on doing of these automations if you guys have any suggestions of future automations you would like to see me run please comment them down below so i can read and build them and if you found this video useful and want to see more automations then hit the subscribe button to never miss a beat thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next